What are you people doing? You're watching Bid Nerds. Thanks a lot. Yes. No, really, thanks, guys. We appreciate you being here. Uh, this is a show we do every darn day for you, even though there are only a couple of you. Uh, my name is John <laughs> Polnick. I'm going to put my name up on the bottom just so you know uh, that I'm not lying. That's it. Uh, we're recording this oh. show from the container it really, park. And it really is your name. It really is. Who knew? And look, uh, Michael Deeb has a name, too. That's who uh, was just uh, busting my balls over here. This guy. Michael Deeb balls. in San Francisco. Yep. Welcome to Bid Nerds, guys. This is the daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. We find the most interesting car of the day. We have a conversation about it. We make a prediction as to what's going to happen with that uh, car's sale. It's auction. And then we reconcile... Uh, those predictions with the future. We travel into the future and we find out exactly how much that car sells for. We reconcile those two things right here on this episode so you will know. Today's most interesting car um, isn't even a whole dang car, if you can believe it. <laughs> Lies. Um, Lies. <laughs> it's uh, okay, and uh, you know, we've been having internet uh, issues this whole week, and we might be having them again. Michael Deeb, why don't you <laughs> tell us what uh, the most interesting car of the day is, and I will see if I can get the internet to. Uh, hey, look, it's it says it's com it says it's cooperating. So it says it's cooperating. It so says JP, it's cooperating. This is actually a first for us because we're not actually covering a car. On P car market, we're covering a car part, uh, something that is so rare. I didn't even know they had made this part. Uh, what we're looking at is a factory option Porsche 911 G body Cabriolet factory hardtop part number. Uh, 911092. Although I think that's actually a serial number. I think this is the 92nd one that they made. Um, out of the 1980s era Porsche accessories catalog, um, is this faction hardtop, which I've never even seen before, I've never even heard of it. Uh, it would be super, super rare. Um, in the description, the seller says that it fits an 83 to 87 Cabriolet. Um, but then he goes on to correct himself in the comments, suggesting that this part will only fit an 85 to 89 for sure, and that it might fit a 964. It's believed to fit, um, but, but certainly a lot of confusion. Nobody knows exactly what it fits, but certainly if you have a second, ver second generation 3.2 Carrera, this is probably your car part uh, and super rare because I've never even heard of it. Um, it is offered out of Surrey, British Columbia. Um, so the car, the, the part is in uh, Canada, but I don't think it would be that hard to bring in. It just costs a few bucks to ship it. Uh, really, really neat. And maybe if you're on the West Coast or in like Washington or Oregon, you could drive up and go get it, put it on your car and drive it home. And then nobody would be the wiser. Looks to be in excellent condition. The black uh, fabric headliner looks really good. The um, correct Porsche glass is in place with a rear defroster. Um, really, really neat card part. Uh, JP, I think you should put this on your 964 and, and rock it. That'd be really, really neat. Uh, it's sitting at $4,000 with a day to go. But I have a sneaky suspicion this thing's going to go for a lot of money. At least that's what I think is going to happen. John, what do you think? My question to you, though, right out of the gate is, have you ever heard of this car part before? Or did you know about it before this auction lot? And did you see the picture of the accessories catalog? They show on, on a G-body that has phone dial wheels, which I think is really cool. Uh, where are you at on this? Yeah, I I had heard rumors of them, but I had never seen one. I, I, I always thought that if they did exist, that it was some kind of like aftermarket thing. Because, uh, like, there's a couple aftermarket companies that make, like, target tops for 996s and 997s. True target tops, not just the big stupid sunroof thing. Um, but uh, this is pretty darn incredible. Um, looking at the latch system, it kind of looks like a Targa latch. But I don't... 
Th there's some confusion in the comments from the seller and the, and that contradict the ad a little bit. If this fits a 964, I definitely want it. Because think about oh, it, a yeah. 964 Cabrio is worth half at best what a 964 Coop Coupe is, is worth. worth. So what happens when you can put this on top of it? Does that <laughs> increase so cool. the value at all? I mean, I'm sure oh, it does, but does yeah. it make it Coupe value or is it somewhere in between? I don't know. The other big question I have is like, what do you do with a convertible top? Like, do you have to take it off in order for the because this because on a on a air cooled nine eleven unlike the modern nine elevens like the nine nine sixes and up the the convertible tops drop down underneath a shell uh, whereas on G bodies and nine six fours and even nine nine threes that whole convertible top is sitting up above the body it like comes it's like <laughs> yeah. you have to put this boot over it so there's no way this thing would fit over that stuff so. Does that mean you have to just remove all that stuff and then this is what you have? Uh, so and you have then a, you... a roadster or a hot top, but not a convertible anymore. You have to, f you have to give one away. Yeah, I mean, to and, and how difficult is this? You know, how heavy is it? I have so many questions, right? Um, like, <laughs> how do you actually make this thing work? I don't care. I would want to try. The thing about like me, if there was a way, like on the nine eleven Speedster, right? That top is. There's barely any top there. It's not designed to really be a, a top to have uh, during any kind of weather. It's more of just like it's a just-in-case top. If you happen to get caught in weather, uh, it's a major pain in the ass to erect. It doesn't go up automatically. Um, there's all kinds of straps and stuff like that that are just really difficult to deal with. Um, so, But I could live with that, right? I, I live in the yeah. desert. It hardly ever rains. If there was yeah. some way to throw a tonneau, to if I could just say take off all the convertible junk um, and just leave the house and just hope it doesn't rain on me and maybe have like some kind of like bikini top or something that I could throw yeah. over an emergency, that would be kind of cool. Uh, but I don't know if there's anything like that um, for a regular convertible. Whereas this thing, uh, you know, you can't carry it around. Once you put this on, you're kind of committed to it, I guess. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to it's think. I do know I kind of want it, though. Because I do have a 964 convertible. The photo of it on the accessories page, it certainly doesn't look like there's a convertible top in the back window. And, and you know, based on yeah, what you're saying, the way the, convert way the convertible top folds and sits above the, the body line, theoretically, then, if this fit over the convertible top, which we're not saying it does, yeah. you'd see the convertible top would be blocking half of your windows. <laughs> Like, it'd be kind of ridiculous. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of questions. But, man, well, the, it's riveted on part number or serial number plate that really has me intrigued. If this is a legit value option part, even if you can't fit it to your car, however ridiculous that statement sounds, I still think it's worth a lot of money. It's like, you know, another thing, too, is that the fact, okay, this particular one for sale is a white one. And, if, and yeah. right now you can see the accessories page photo I've got up here. I'll go full photo. Um, yeah. Where it attaches to the body is a black seal. Um, yeah. You know, there's rubber trim around it, which makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> and on the white car, it looks a little weird. <clears throat> the black version of it below, <clears throat> if that were sitting on a black car, that would You'd suck up that it. seal. You wouldn't even notice it. And my 964 yeah. happens to be a black one. Black. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really interested in this thing. If I get this, so I would dope. just either vinyl wrap it black or whatever, uh, or maybe yeah. go ahead and paint it. I mean, because it is, you got to find out whether or not you got to commit to all the other stuff. But yeah, I'm super, super intrigued. I wonder how noisy it is. Who cares how noisy it is, really? Who cares? Yeah. You know, yeah. and then, you know, how well does your window seal up to it? Uh, your driver's window when you roll the window up? I, this. Yeah, this is something else. I, I, how much is this worth? Holy cow. I don't know. What do you think this thing's worth, Michael Deep? So, JP, our parts offered out of British Columbia, it cost $8,500, which was essentially 12,500 Deutsche Marks back in the mid-80s. So it was $8,500 brand new. With basically two days to go, it's sitting at $4,000. But, John, I mean... From everything I've seen, I, I I think this car I think this part is worth at least sixteen thousand dollars. And if I'm and if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, 
I'm telling you it's going to go over. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if somebody spent 20000 bucks on this thing. Even if they never intended to put it in place, it's just so rare. I didn't even know it existed. How is that even possible? Like, now, I'm not saying I know everything about 9-11s, but, like, we have been scouring 9-11s for the last, like, four or five years. You know, the two of us traveling the world and talking about classics. I've never even heard of this thing. So if it's legit and it appears to be, uh, I would say this is a very valuable part. And as much as I'd love to see you get it, um, I'd be shocked if you did because I yeah. know how, let's just say, frugal you are, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, just go ahead and say it. I'm cheap. Um, this is the kind of thing you, you dream of, like, coming across at a swap meet or a garage yeah. sale or something like a that. A garage sale where somebody um, didn't know. The widow's yeah. selling it. She has no idea what it is. Uh, there is a reserve on this part, so it's mm. it's going to be protected. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to rip it for 5500 bucks. I yeah. do think this thing's going to bring something with, uh, you know, at least five digits. Uh, all right, so your number is 16000 Sixteen thousand JP. I I think this is going to go big money, if not yeah, more. I'll say ten. I mean, I just I. I, I would I you buy know. it at ten? The, no. The viewers want to know. Yeah, I don't think I would. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't, look. I don't know. What do you guys think? It, it, if you have a nine six four cab that's maybe worth, let's say, forty five grand, right? You know, with because uh, forty five to fifty grand is kind of like the uh, yeah. The, yeah, the sweet spot the for nine six four cabs forty five fifty yeah. grand for really really nice the night a super nice nine six four cab uh, with super low miles you're looking at maybe fifty five right uh huh with this on it would it increase the value above and beyond the cost of the unit so let's say this is a ten thousand dollar piece of kit you put right. that on your fifty thousand dollar car is it now a fi- is it now a sixty thousand yep. dollar car, or does that make it like all the other nine six four coupes that are eighty or ninety? Yeah, I, I think it's. I think it increases the value of the car for sure. Well, okay, but by what? Well, that's that is the question, right? I mean, I, yeah, I of course say- it increases the value of the car. Like I said, if it's a fifty thousand dollar car and you put this on it, a ten thousand dollar piece of equipment, does it make it? Does that make it a sixty thousand dollar car, or does that make it say, a ninety thousand dollar car? Because we, we don't know how much the part is, I'm going to say 100% of the price of the part itself because you found it. So if the part is 10 grand, it makes the car worth 20 grand more. If the part is worth 15 grand, then I think it makes the car worth $30,000 more. I think, I, think it, I think it does a really good job of increasing the value of your car. You know, and particularly because it's a factory part. If this were some yes. kind of aftermarket thing, I think it'd be a completely different equation. But uh, I suspect there, there there might be you might be right. I mean, no. uh, it, it's, huh, boy, I I just don't know if it's if it's a if it's ten grand worth of gambling uh, in in this. I, I don't think you <laughs> lose money. I mean, as far as uh, recouping, you'd be able to sell this thing no problem. Whatever you buy it for, you'll probably be able to sell it for this, the same yeah. amount of money uh, separately. Uh, but it would be an interesting experiment to get this, put it on 964, and see how much more the 964 gets. Um, yeah. So, all right, well, after there it is. It ar- after you drive it around for a year and a half. Right. Uh, yeah. Would this get you into Lyft Cult? Would I finally get in? <laughs> Would well, they be able to resist or would they loop yeah. reject me again like always? Yeah. All right. Well, hey, uh, what do you guys think? Put in the comment below. Uh, is this gonna is this thing going to bring five figures or more or are we just nuts? Uh, I, I, I really want opinions on this one because I have yeah. no freaking clue. Uh, but yeah. uh, let's find out right now. Hey, guys, I'm super excited to tell you about our sponsor, Guys Customs. That's guys, G-Y-X, underscore customs. That's how you spell it, guys, customs, bracelets. These things are amazing. Check them out. They're handmade in America, custom bracelets made to match your watch or your car. These things are unbelievable. I have three or four of them myself. My partner, Michael Deeb, has a bunch of them. Uh, They're pretty addictive once you get one. Each one of them are bespoke. We're talking... Uh, we're talking carbon fiber. We're talking titanium. 
titanium. We're talking stainless steel, glass. There's none of this cheap Chinese garbage that you see a lot of bracelets being made out there. These ones are super high quality. They're made right here in America. When you go to Guy's Customs on Instagram, it's about the only place that you can order one of these. Uh, when you DM the artist, you're actually reaching the real artist when you DM Guy's Customs at Instagram. Uh, and she will make you a bracelet made to match that special watch that special car or that special person that has a special watch or a special car and they want something really really cool uh in their life these are the they make the most amazing gifts um i get compliments on mine all the time everywhere i go people are like wow that's really cool you can see in the pictures uh you know these beads the the colored beads are PTS, they're paint to sample. So if you have a specific color code for your car, she'll have beads made that are specifically painted to match your car or your watch. It's unbelievable. You gotta get one of these guys, customs, bracelets. Check them out, they support us, uh, and we really, really, really wanna support them. Guys, customs, bracelets. All right, let's get back to the bids. Let's find out how much that car sold for today. Welcome back to the future, everyone. We are the Bid Nerd, your daily nerd on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. What a weird way to end the week. Um, okay, so last week we reviewed, when we actually did this, uh, we're here in the future with you now uh, talking about this. Man, there's been some crazy stuff going on in the market, especially by the time you're watching this uh, episode. You know that uh, the stock market is, going, is having all kinds of issues. All other market classes are going. Uh, somehow or another, um, this market class or this asset class of uh, classic cars seems to still be hanging on like people are like oh no no everything's fine a little bit a little bit of head in the sand going on and if ever there was a result that uh proves that car people just aren't paying attention to anything else uh yeah. the results of this auction might be one of the weirdest ones we've seen in a long time but uh you called it you thought this thing would be worth a lot what happened with this not even JP? car. It's not even the most interesting did car. You, it's the most interesting you, top of a you, car. Did you buy it? Is it yours? Did you get it? Yeah, did you win it? Uh, let me just tell you, I did not buy this thing. Oh, this is... come on, man. We were all hoping that you were going to buy this thing and paint it black and put it on one of your cars. I, I'll, I'll admit I wanted it, but like for five oh. or six grand, I may have popped, which I think would have oh, been yeah. just an absurd amount of money. But yeah. yeah, me and our collective audience forgot how cheap you are. So yeah, yeah, this yeah, is true. frugal, frugal. Yeah, He's frugal. frugal. No, cheap so, John, you know, the big argument we said when we were covering this is how do you quantify a value for something even you and I as Porsche guys barely knew existed? I, I didn't, and I think you'd heard of it, but nobody's ever seen one. Um, anyway, uh, I said $16,000. You said ten grand, and if it was under ten grand, you would be a player for it. Um, I called it, I, look, sixteen. dollars it go as high as twenty five. dollars Well, our hard up on Pico Market sold. It was a no reserve auction. No, it was a reserve auction. So it sold on 38 bids at a whopping $19,500. 38 bids, JP. This thing got a ton of action on PCAR market. Um, and I, I, I mean, I, I know it's bombastic for you, but I'm not surprised by that result at all. And I do think I agree with that take you made just a few minutes ago that if a guy puts this on a car and then winds up selling the car with this on it, that the car is going to bring more than $20,000 more than the car is worth. Uh, because, again, where would you find another one? So I, I, I don't – I do you think that's the case? I don't think that I is do. the case. I do. I, if this guy puts – imagine if he puts it on a Speedster. How sick would that be on an 89 It won't speedster? fit on a Speedster. Why not? This, because, the, because the roof you, is to too hot. Oh. No, you, yeah, the, okay. the, the roof right. is only, so, you know, okay. so hot. All right. So now, all right, give me a G50 <laughs> equipped – M491 yeah. cab where you remove the convertible top like Tony Mazzagatti for yeah. him for, and you put this thing on, it's paint to mat, and your car's worth a hundred grand. I think this thing will bring more than 120 with this on in place. And the convertible top off the car, so the work's already been done, but included in a sale, I think the car brings more than 120 grand now. That's I think this thing's worth more. I think I think the new owner is better off not to use this thing, uh, to just put it on a shelf and save it. Uh, don't put it on a car. 
uh, or if you do, you know, uh, when it's time to sell that car, sell it without it. I think this thing's going to continue to bring big money as just a obscure, weird collector item or something like that. I, I just don't think this brings... Look, if, if like I did put this on my... Let's say I had put it on my 964, right? My 964 yeah. has a hundred something thousand miles on it. Uh, sure. It's black on black. I paint it black. Uh, right now, is it worth, call it 50 grand-ish, give yeah. or take, yeah. right? Sure. Uh, does the car bring 70 with this on it? No way in hell. Not oh. a chance. It's still a convertible... Uh, Porsche and all, especially Porsche people are so there's such cabriophobes. People are like, <laughs> oh, that's cool, but it's really a cabri underneath, so it'll be it won't be as rigid as a real as a real hard top, and it will still creak and it's it, 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 you won't be able to race it. You know, they'll still say all this stupid jagoff stuff that cabriophobes say. It's 2020, man. Stop being a cabriophobe. Um, yeah, I think this thing's better off uh, as a collector item. Uh, what do you guys think out there? Let us know in the oh. comments below. Uh, do you think uh, this would... Now, I, the other thing, too, uh -huh. is that if you have a convertible, you probably have a convertible because you like the top coming off, right? Uh -huh. So this, this screws that up. You put that on here, you can't take this on and off uh, like, a, like a convertible top. So now right. you've got to commit to having this thing on there. <laughs> Are you really driving your convertible 911 during the winter time? Is that why you need this stupid thing? Um, you know, and the the literally the amount, the the labor cost of removing oh, uh, a convertible top and then having it put back reinstalled is, for, I mean, that's thousands of dollars right there. So I think at the if you're putting this on your convertible top, you're basically trying to create a fake Rolex. Um, you're trying to convince people that, oh, hey, look, I've got a coupe. Well, no, you don't. you got a fiberglass top. This, you know, it's just as unsafe. It, there's no rollover protection. There's no rigidity. There's it, none of the good things out of this. Isn't this top the Seattle solution? So during the winter, you have your hard top and no rain gets in the car. And then in the summer, when the weather's beautiful, you have a roadster. If, if you had a – no, because if you had <laughs> – like modern convertibles, yes, right? Like 996s and yeah. 997s, they make convertible tops with it. They look a little goofy. Uh, yeah. But you can take that clamshell – like literally one person, if you're strong enough, can like – install that damn thing two people no problem yeah. it takes like 10 five five right. ten minutes you put the top down and you clamp on the uh the the, the portable hard top and you're good to go for the winter okay it's springtime uh you take that thing off and then you've got your summer but here's the thing about seattle is that it might be nice <laughs> in the springtime it might be nice in the morning but yeah. you go to lunch and you you know you're eating your pho uh and then you look outside <laughs> and you're like oh crap it's raining and you know how many yeah. you see people running out the door and they got to put their top up you you're screwed with this you have no top <laughs> you have no top you can't even oh, put a bikini man. top or a tonneau top on it or anything like that right. so no you, i mean it really the only place that it makes sense honestly is like maybe here in las vegas where uh where it gets cold uh, really cold in the winter time, you know, for a month yeah. or so. So maybe you put it on then, uh, and then yeah. maybe in the summertime you put it on so that you can use your air conditioning if you have it. Um, right. But uh, I, yeah, I honestly don't. Th this thing just doesn't make sense because you have to commit to it. You uh, no longer have your soft top once you put this on. Hence, they didn't make that many of them, and you and I had never heard of it. So shocking, it wasn't a, a you know yeah. a hot a huge seller. success. It makes yeah. sense in the modern ones because the tops completely go down all the way flush underneath. But the but the old convertibles, they've got all that stuff sticking out. So there's just no e way to put even, this on. Even at twenty grand, I will mm -hmm. give you. It's a very cool collectible piece to like garage art to hang from the ceiling in your garage. It's yeah. pretty cool. The scenario I just spoke of. Makes yeah. sense. I actually would have done yeah. that if it were five sure. or ten grand. There was uh, a, a, about a year and a half ago. I I, I blinked. Um, they made a someone out of Germany. It wasn't from the factory. Someone made a target top for a nine nine seven. So yeah. it, and I had a nine nine seven dot two convertible. Um, yeah. And it wasn't like you know the nine nine seven nine nine six and nine nine seven targas were just big sunroofs but this top was a two-piece unit that looked like the 991 targets right you popped sure. it on the back it just clamped down on the back and then you had a, a yeah. true target piece in the middle and yeah. you know i could have bought that for four or five thousand bucks uh now putting that on a 997 uh yeah. definitely would have increased the value by 
whatever the hell I paid would have paid for that thing. Right. I was like, eh, shipping it. I don't know. And then, then somebody else bought it and I was stupid. I should have gotten it. Uh, that would have <laughs> been sick. Um, if they made a Targa loop, if they made something like this, like a Targa, make your convertible into a Targa. Now we're yeah. talking. Cause then you could plop yeah. something like that on a nine, nine, three. And who's ever seen a Targa nine, nine, three, that would have been super dope, but yeah. no. Nope. Anyways. All right. Onward what do upward. you guys think, guys? Uh, was this thing worth twenty thousand dollars as a garage man cave art? Uh, is it functional? Is it something you would have used, or is this just a fool and their money part ways? Uh, let us know in the <laughs> comments below, and uh, we will see you tomorrow with the most interesting car of the. <laughs>